Hi, I'm Siri Dean with McCrell. I'm one of the authors of the second edition of Classroom Instruction That Works. We've all used or heard the expression, all students can learn. But that isn't likely unless there is high quality instruction in every classroom every day. What does high quality instruction look like? Classroom Instruction That Works answers this question by summarizing the research on instruction over the last 40 years and presents that research in ways that help teachers know what strategies to use and how, when, and why to use them. These strategies help students develop confidence in their ability to learn challenging content and access and build on their prior knowledge. These strategies also help students interact with knowledge on deep levels, store knowledge and memory in multiple ways, and use complex reasoning processes to make knowledge meaningful and memorable. When teachers use these strategies intentionally and with quality and fidelity to create the environment for learning, to help students develop understanding, and to help students extend and apply their knowledge, these strategies are powerful tools for teaching and learning. Now, let's hear more about one of these effective strategies. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hubble, one of the co-authors of Classroom Instruction That Works, second edition. I'm here today to give you four tips about using generating and testing hypotheses in your classroom. The first is a systems analysis. This is having your students look at all the parts of a system, and if they tweak just one of those, how does that impact the system as a whole? So we could look at something like an ecosystem with a pond, and one summer there's a big drought, the pond dries up, how does that impact all the other life forms around that pond? or students could take a, a, a book that they've recently read and make one tweak in the story, change the time period, change the gender of the main character. How does that impact the story later on? The second is problem solving. This isn't a mathematics problem solving, but solving real world problems. For example, have your students design a new evacuation system for your building, or have them solve a, a problem that's in your community and, and research what they would need to go about to do that. The third is what we usually think of in a science classroom, an experimental inquiry. This is where students notice a phenomenon, come up with uh, various hypotheses for what's causing that, and then run tests to see which, one, which of their hypotheses might be correct. A fourth and final would be having an investigation. This can be a historical investigation or one of current events. So for example, students could research the lost colony of Roanoke, Virginia, and come up with hypotheses of what happened in that colony. Or they may look at different uh, hypotheses of John F. Kennedy's assassination and, and why we have different ideas about the events that occurred on that day. So that's four processes, systems analysis, problem solving, investigations, and experimental inquiries can move your students beyond that right answer learning, helping them to use what they're learning in a real world context. I'm Elizabeth Hubble, and that's been your Quick Tip from McCrell.